Hi, Karen Alari here. Today we're going to be painting this little forest path scene. Most of the time I'll be using a number four flat brush. We'll also use a small round brush and I'm painting on an 8x10 stretched canvas. The colors we're using today are Hansa Yellow Opaque and Naphthal Red Light and Alizarin Crimson. For our blues we're going to be using Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Blue Green Shade and of course titanium white. All the other colors on the palette there are just mixed from those colors. So we're going to start by toning our canvas. I just used some green. It doesn't matter what color you used. Throw a little paint on there and then wipe it down with a damp paper towel just to cover the white of the canvas and get us started. So I'm using that small round brush now to draw out a little bit just our basic roadmap for what we're doing. And I'm putting those little spots on the thirds of the canvas. That just gives me a compositional framework to work within. I know I don't want to be putting anything in the very center. It just helps me know where I'm going. So in the back there, in this scene we have lots of layers of green. So we're going to be talking a lot about mixing greens and how we want to paint a scene that's green on green like this one is. It's so lush and and wonderful of a scene to paint but it can be a little bit intimidating because it's just mostly green. So I'm just laying in where the path is going to be just really loosely and really lightly. This video is sped up a little bit just to make us uh, get through it a little easier but I'm just I'm just thinking about okay the path I needs to come in this certain area the trees what what layer back of, are the trees on so I'm starting to pay attention to those layers I see in my reference photo there's some foliage in the back and then it moves forward and this little line I just put in is the line where the foreground starts I've got a few little rocks along the path. I don't want to put that one right in the middle of the path that, like it's showing in the reference photo because I don't want people to feel like they're going to trip when they walk into the painting, right? So really just thinking roadmap, getting myself starting to look a little more closely at the reference photo. So that's it. That's all the drawing I'm going to do. And here's my number four uh, flat brush. Really you can use whatever brush you want to use, a bright, a flat. You just don't want to go too small when you're painting in this kind of uh, style that's a little bit loose. So I mixed up a little bit of that purple. That darkest color there is just made with phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. Those two darkest colors I have on my palette and that gives me the closest I need to black and it helps helps me darken colors down and also neutralize them a little bit. So my overall idea about this painting is that everything is very green. When you look at the trunks of the trees, even the trunks of the trees look green with all the moss growing on them and also just all that green light bouncing around in the scene everywhere. So so I put those ones in on the right using a dark green color. Now this big tree that's in here is got some very light parts of it where the sun is hitting it a little bit and some very dark parts of it. And that's very typical of something that's going to be in the foreground of your scene. It's going to have dark darks and light lights if it's being hit by the sun. These tree trunks I'm just laying in there real loosely in the back. You noticed I added some ultramarine blue to that color and some white to give me a lighter grayish kind of a color because it's in the distance and remember whenever we're trying to create distance in our painting we need to go bluer and more neutral with our color as we move back in the scene. Those darks will be lighter as you move back. So I know I'm just going to have all kinds of tree trunks showing in this so I'm I'm just experimenting and I'm I'm kind of finding my way around as to where I want to put which trunks. 
thinking in terms of the ones in the back are smaller and lighter and bluer and the ones in the foreground have more meat to them. The next thing I'm putting in here is the path and it's going to be very light because it's horizontal and flat on the ground, right? So it's getting most the most light from the sky of anything that's there except things that are in full sunlight. So I mixed up something that was a little bit lighter than that, adding a little more white, and I'm adding a little bit of green to that as well. I'm remembering to think about the fact that these, everything is kind of greenish in this whole painting, so I'm adding that green to almost everything. And those two greens I have mixed, the one on the bottom is made with thalo blue and Hansa yellow, and the one on the top is made with ultramarine blue, and I've got both of those blues on my palette because they make very different greens, as you can see. And I know I need lots of different greens to make this scene work. Okay, so this one's got, I'm mixing in a, a little bit of both of the greens. I'm just, I'm just kind of feeling around and finding the right values. What we're working on right now is values. So this is called the block-in stage, and, and I'm not really thinking so much about exact color, and I'm certainly not thinking about exact shapes, but I'm, I'm really trying to nail in how light or dark does this particular area need to be. So I've got some greens that I'm mixing back and forth from that yellower green and that bluer green, and then adding white to them adding a little bit of orange to them to mute them out. You'll see me do that a lot in this using that orange color that was mixed with the Hansa yellow and the naphthal red because that's going to mute that color. Okay, here's some yellow, putting in some yellow straight into that that uh, thalo green mixture because I'm now I'm feeling around for that value and that color that's going to be that that large area of the lightest, brightest foliage that's the little plants that are down there. Some of that's going to be also up in these leaves that are coming in front of the um, of the tree trunks. And you notice how I shifted to a little bluer color along the edges. I'm saving that center area at, to be a little more light, have a little more sunlight coming through it. So already you can see all the different colors of green that we're playing with here. Here I'm mixing a blue using a little ultramarine and a little bit of thalo and some white. And Actually, I don't think I put any thalo in that. That's all ultramarine because I'm working on those blue wildflowers that are growing in there. They're purplish blue color, and ultramarine is really a purplish blue already. It's That's why I have both of those on my palette. They mix up very differently. And ultramarine is going to be warmer, leaning more towards the purple, whereas the thalo is darker and cooler, leaning more towards a green. But you notice I added a little bit of thalo when I wanted to do the darker areas down there. Again, just playing with colors and looking for those values. This is still the block-in phase, so I'm still just looking at those overall shapes and trying to figure out what those values are going to be in order to create depth and interest in the painting. Adding a little more yellow to that green got a little bit too neutral for me. So it's all a matter of trial and error with this. Mi mixing your color slightly different and trying it again. Here's some white with some yellow and I'm putting in, just blocking in some of that background. I know the value needs to be the lightest value in this painting. So I want some of that in there so I know how to compare all the rest of them. So there's the block in. That's as far as we're going to go with that 
block in stage. We got our values set up pretty much. So now we're going to come back and we're going to start adjusting and refining what I've got going on there. And I'm going to start with these rocks mixed up some gray color but I'm al always remembering that I want these colors to always be kind of greenish most of the colors in this whole scene so I keep adding a little bit of green to things as I'm going here's a little ultramarine added to that green pile you notice how I just keep moving those piles from one color to another you don't have to start a fresh pile for each mix because the more of these different values and colors of greens we can get in there the more interesting it's going to be. This is a darker bluish green and I'm using it to look at my reference photo and find where those dark spots are. Jumping up to the dark in the tree, the green with a bunch of that purple, and a little bit of white to raise the value a little bit. I want those trees on the right to maybe have a little bit lighter values, not be quite as dark as our main tree trunk there. So I'm comparing those values. Some orange and some yellow and some white. A little bit of green in there to dull that down a little bit. Let's get some of these light areas on the tree trunk. Working in this style that's very impressionistic, you it's important to stay with this larger brush and not get too fussy with your, your shapes, but just use lots of paint on your brush and lay those brush strokes in. That's so important. If you're having trouble with not being able to get the brush strokes looking the way you want them to, it's probably because you're not putting enough paint on your brush. So, a little tiny bit of thalo, some ultramarine, and some white. I basically decided that I didn't like that yellowish color for the sky. I think I decided I was going to go with some blue that's going to help me tie in the blue of the flowers as well so that those blue flowers aren't the only place where you're seeing blue. So I just switched that over from the yellowish color to the blue color and I'm happier with that. So mixing some bright green with phthalo blue and yellow. Whenever I want a really bright green I'm going to use that phthalo blue because ultramarine is going to give you more muted greens. Adding white and just really testing that value. I want to get some of those bright foreground green colors. I can't go too put too much white in there. I can't go too light because that will mute the color. So I'm just through trial and error finding something that's going to be bright enough but also light enough. Using my ultramarine blue mixed green there you can see how much more neutral it is. And I added a little purple to it to neutralize it even more. So I'm adjusting the colors of these tree trunks down there. They're very mossy, these tree trunks, so that's a lot of fun. But finding that color that's that neutral green is just takes trial and error. So some of that purple, some green, a little blue, a little white, mixing up a darkish grayish color for the bottoms. <clears throat> of the tree trunks. You, you always want to adjust, you know, you, you don't want every color on that tree trunk to be the same all the way down because it's going to, you know, be more in shadow at the bottom. Areas will be in light, so got to adjust that color. Add it a little more white to give more form. You'll get roundness and form to the trunk by having dark, medium, and light values in there. If you just paint that trunk all one color, one value, it's going to look very flat. So I'm just still trying to discover the 
shapes I want in the trunks over there and I'm being really messy and just putting in some ideas because I know I can always come back and adjust. Okay, some more of that greenish mossy color to just touch that in here and there. The more little slight variations of color and value I can get on those tree trunks, the more interesting they're going to look and the more they're going to have shape. More my dark purple, adding orange to it. That's going to give me a brownish sort of darker color because now I'm trying to add all those interesting variations to this main trunk in the back. Going with some phthalo blue there. Get a nice color shift into the very cool colors in the shadows. Adding some white to that pile of brownish colors. A little more orange. Just every time I go back to the palette, I just kind of mix up something slightly different. It's a really interesting shape to this trunk. It's very massive, but it kind of has a cut in the middle of it makes it very interesting. So I'm experimenting with how much of that I want to put in by just looking at the colors and the shapes and just laying in real simple brush strokes. Trial and error. Some of the green with orange added, that's what gives us those wonderful mossy colors. This paint is real wet so you'll notice how that darkish green when I'm putting it up on top over that lighter color it's mixing together on the canvas because that paint is still wet. A little more of the lighter color just finding some interesting shapes. Some green and some blue to it. I don't want a lot of really sharp edges there, so I'm bringing in some blue here into that color and, and creating a color that's in between the dark and the light. Adding orange and white to get a warmer tone to that. Just slight variations of value, and that's going to give us more interest. If I want to blend between the two colors that I've put down, I'm going to bring in more paint to blend that. I'm not going to try to blend it dry. You know these acrylics, they dry fast. So if you want to create a transition between two values, just mix up a color that's in between those values and add paint and blend your colors that way. Some more white in that. You notice I spritzed my paints a little bit. That's something you, you can do also to keep your paints moist as you're working with them. Some ultramarine blue and some orange which makes a lovely gray. Whenever you want to gray a color down remember you're going to add the complement. So orange is a complementary color to that blue so it's going to make a nice gray color. Working on those back trunks I want to add some slightly different values, staying within that value that I already established, but adding slightly different, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, in order to give them some form. Otherwise, they're just going to look like f uh, they're going to look flat. So I'm looking at that reference photo and I'm just picking out, noticing where there's some darker space places and, and where's some lighter space places, and just putting little touches in there. Now using some of that dark purples and coming into this tree trunk which is in front of the others so it's going to be darker. So I'm taking advantage of that pile of dark purple I've got mixed up. Thinking about where these tree trunks are stopping, where they they live in the space. Some orange, 
into that brownish color, brownish green. Just that orange and green together is going to give you that nice moss color. All these trees have lots and lots of moss on them. So they're not going to be a brown tree trunk. Be sure to take time to step back and look at your values or, or squint. I also squint a lot as I'm painting to get the overall picture. Using some more of that bluish colors, ultramarine blue and white to make some of those, some adding more tree trunks in the background. So it's going to be lighter back there. You don't want them to be super blue, so a tiny, tiny little bit of orange in that goes a long way to neutralizing that color, making it a little grayer. When I say neutralizing, that's what I mean. It's, I mean making a little grayer. There's some phthalo blue and some white with a little bit of orange to neutralize that again, just to add a little bit of different color on those. And the further back you go in the distance, the less you're going to have of those lights and darks. It's going to be, until you get to the far distance, you'll just have pretty much one color going on. Just not a lot of shifting. So now, I've got a little bit of white in those. I'm thinking about the, the area behind the trees back there that's got foliage. So I want a, a mix, mixing up a green that's very blue and kind of neutral and isn't very far off from the values of the tree trunks. It's pretty light in value. I don't want a real strong value shift back there. Otherwise it won't feel like it's receding into the distance. So I'm painting around my tree trunks with this color using the background color to shape my foreground trunks and make them a little tidier and a little more in the shape that I want them to be. All just using this very light bluish green. Now I added a little bit more phthalo to it because I wanted something a little more vivid back there. Again, every time I kind of go back to the palette I usually just shift up my color a little bit but I want to go in and just kind of finish off these backgrounds by adding these layers coming forward. And as we get come forward like this, I shifted more into that yellowy green that I got up there. The values are almost the same, but you have a cool warm shift going on. Some cool greens and some warm greens. Cool greens have more blue in them, warm greens have more yellow in them, and that gives you some variation back there. Using that negative painting to shape those trunks. I keep looking back at my reference photo and you know getting an overall idea. I am pushing those background values lighter and bluer so I get even more of a feeling of distance. So adding a little phthalo blue to that and that gives me a color that's a little bit darker, still staying very blue because I'm kind of in the background, but that just gives me those layers of foliage. And you notice I'm not painting a lot of leaves back there, I'm just using shapes, big shapes, to represent the foliage. We're just kind of hinting at things back there and letting the viewer, the viewer's mind fill in the details, because they will. So added some of that straight uh, green mixed from the phthalo up there to my pile of greens now. As I'm moving forward, so my colors are getting richer and a little bit darker. And you notice how I'm using my brush. I'm creating different shapes with the brush by using the corner, by using the flat, the corner, and I'm flipping the brush over and back and forth to give, give myself some different shapes. So you don't need a lot of different brushes, you just need to use your brush in a way that you're taking advantage of all the possibilities that it has for making 
shapes. Added a little bit of purple to bring those trees on the right forward a little bit. I didn't want a straight line with them all finishing at the same the same level. Instead, pulling a couple of those forward so it gives me more of a feeling of those are further in front. Yellow, some of my bright green, a little bit of white. And I'm going back and just adding uh, those few little leaves that are coming over the tree trunks to give, give myself some overlapping. Added a little phthalo blue to that to create the value and the colors at the base. More blue, a little bit of purple, which will darken it up. Because right here now I'm very much in the foreground, so that's going to be the, where my darkest darks are. Lightening that back up. So I have this nice kind of bluish green color, and I, I'm creating the darks going back so I needed to lighten it up a little bit. You don't want to put the same value of dark back in the midground as you have in the foreground so you need those to lighten up as they go back. So I've got some brownish colors going on made with blue and orange. If you don't want a gray but you want a you want a more of a brown color you take have the blue and the orange mixed together but you have more orange in the mix that's going to make a brown and if you want that to go more gray you add more blue so I'm creating thinking about where the shadows are going to be on my path and thinking about where these rocks are going to be so I'm starting with the darker values to create the rocks and then adding lighter values this time I put more of that green in there because these rocks are also moss covered like everything else in this scene just about. So if you in acrylics you can layer on top of layer so you can start with that darkest color and then put medium colors on that and then lighter colors to create your form. Some yellow and some green to make a lighter mossy color. I'm thinking about which of those rocks are going to be in the sunlight and I'm creating a little bit more of a sunlight area on the path there than is in the reference photo just for more interest. Rock shapes can be really fun to paint. I just I'm looking back at my reference photo with just about every brush stroke I'm doing and I'm just seeing where are the dark shapes, where are the medium value shapes, where are the lighter shapes. I'm just trying to not even think about it so much as just look with my eye and then grab that value and that color from my palette without thinking about it too much. And I know this little rock right here is going to be catching the sunlight, so it's going to have some dark shadows and some very light areas and it's it's also kind of a focal point area so I'm spending a little more time deciding what that rock looks like and what its shape is. A lot of these colors and values I'm using on the rocks and on the path are the same ones as I can use in that tree trunk. A lighter warmer color. Remember whenever you go to a lighter color by adding white you're almost always going to want to add some warmer color as well because sunlight is warm and titanium white is cool so it will cool off any color that you're using. So I'm using those warm lights thinking about where do I want the light to hit this path. Just back and forth I know there's going to be a little shadow under there and I think I'm putting I'm deciding I want to put a little shadow in the front of the path have that a little bit darker. You never want to if you've got a path that's moving back into the distance, you never want to have it all be the same value and color. You got to have some gradations or else it will look like it's standing up 
like a wall instead of laying down. Little touches. I love dappled light on a pathway, so adding a few light splotches in there to create a little bit of dappling. Back in the back, that path is going to continue around the corner. I'm going to make sure that I get that in there. Adding a little blue to that color though because again I don't want it to be the same color and value as what I've got in the foreground. I want it to recede a little bit. Playing, playing with those shadows. A little more blue, ultramarine blue to make the shadows even. I'm using ultramarine to, to darken these colors because that's going to create more muted colors. So when I'm working with the path, I know that the shadow colors I'm going to want to be more muted. I don't want to put thalo in there because that'll make them real bright blue. Just playing, looking back and forth from those rocks, adding a touch and letting it go. I feel like I what works the best is to make sure you have a lot of paint on your brush and just set a brush stroke in and try to leave it. Don't brush back over the same brush stroke. Don't pet that brush stroke, but just make sure you got enough paint on your brush so the brush stroke is bold and thick and then just lay it in there and move on. You notice after I mixed that paint I wiped my brush off on my on my paper towel and that's because I want to be able to control in a small space where I'm putting these colors so if I have a bunch of globby paint on my brush from having mixed mixed my paint color it it's just going to come blobby off the brush. So I wiped that brush off in order to give myself a nice clean edge. A little more blue in that color. So I'm working into the shadow area up front. These rocks are going to be more in shadow. And it's still kind of a mossy greenish color. It's not real warm down there. This rock too is going to be getting hit by a little bit of sunlight as I'm pumping up the values from what I see on the reference photo in this area. Remember those acrylics are going to dry darker so always lean towards when you're putting the colors down having them be a little bit lighter than you think they need to be. If it looks a little bit light, it's just about right with acrylics. It's more of these darker mossy greens where that rock is curved away from the sunlight. So the colors are going to be darker. It's always a good way to indicate light, have, having that moss showing up in the sunlight and in the shadow for comparison. And kind of a purplish, adding a little bit of purple to those, getting some more grayish rock colors. Once you've worked on these rocks for a little while, you know, don't don't spend so much time on them that you get frustrated just move on to, to the next thing you can always come back. So added some ultramarine blue to that. Might have been thalo blue. And yeah, I think that's thalo blue because it's real dark. I'm looking back restating those darkest darks that I see. Just wherever, looking at the reference photo and then popping in some dark. Just where I see where my eye catches a little bit of that dark. There's some around these rocks. There's going to be some dark on the underneath. It's called an occlusion shadow where the right at the bottom of something when it's sitting down it's going to have a, a dark dark right where the 
rock meets the pathway. I have to be a little careful with these darks as I move back into the distance, remembering we don't want to have our darkest darks back there. We want to keep those in the foreground. Try and add some of that straight green mixed with thalo. Now I'm adding a little more thalo and a little more ultramarine to it. So I'm going to start to create some texture in this foreground, starting with dark now and moving back up into those light values, which is something that you can do when you're working with acrylics because it's all dried in between. So I don't have to worry about working around what I've done. I can just come right back over it and start creating a new dark, medium, and light. I know what value I want that area to be because I've already established that, but I can lay down some dark base and then come back on top to create some leaf shapes. I don't want to create, I don't want to draw really careful leaves with this. I'm just going to use my brush to create shapes that are leaf-like. Coming in with now with a more yellow in that color to make a brighter green, moving into these brightest greens. And you can really see the difference between those greens we did in the background that were much more muted. And now these brighter greens are really stepping forward and make us feel like we're now in the foreground. Using the flat of that brush and the edge of that brush to create these little shapes. Looking back, I'm I'm not just randomly putting in polka dots, but I'm looking at that reference photo with every brush stroke and finding shapes that are over there that are in the photo and just creating little brush strokes that represent those shapes. I want to hint at them. I don't want to draw them real carefully because that will get too tight. So that's how we keep our paintings more loose is by using that bigger brush and using our brush strokes, laying them down and leaving them alone. So I had that big band of dark there and by using these greens I'm reshaping the band of dark, right? I'm just coming in and dropping in some little touches of, of color making sure I've got lots of paint on my brush. Can't emphasize that enough. The more paint you have on your brush, the better you're going to be able to create bold and loose brush strokes, which is what we're going for. Added a little white and a little more yellow to that color. I want it to be, I want these shapes back here now to be smaller. You notice I'm just using that little corner of my brush and I'm making smaller shapes because it's right, it's in the midground, it's further away from us so the shapes are going to be smaller. That's really a good tool to help describe distance in, in your painting is to make sure your shapes get smaller in the distance, as well as lighter and bluer. This area over to the right, when you look at the reference photo, you can see it's, it's a little more in shadow, a little more muted over there. It's not going to be as bright as this foreground area on the left. So I'm working my way up to those brightest bright greens. These purple flowers that are, wildflowers that are in there are kind of stock-like, so I'm coming in with the green and reshaping that purple in a negative way to create those stock-like effects. More of that green here and there. Just looking at that reference photo and you can kind of see where the shapes are smaller and then where, where they get bigger. So I'm just using smaller shapes to create those. Now moving back closer to the front, you can see how I'm using more of the flat of the brush and creating larger shapes. 
a little more yellow in there, working towards those brightest, brightest bright colors, brightest bright greens. Following my reference photo, seeing where those brightest greens are, and just kind of laying them in, using the brush to create little pointy shapes that are kind of leaf-like. A little more white and a little more yellow. Every time we go brighter, lighter with the white, we're going to add the yellow to warm it up. Testing that out, seeing if I like it, always looking and looking. We're working with pigment, so we, we can't recreate what, what's in nature or what's in the photo exactly because we're working with these pigments. And as we go lighter, we start losing color. So everything is relative. If I keep the rest of the colors a little more muted and just use as pure of a color as I can up front, then I can get that shift. Still following the reference photo, still looking at it and seeing where I see those shapes. Remember to step back from your painting often, if you can, or set up a mirror behind you so you can look at the painting in a mirror. It's really helpful. What looks like just blobs when you're five inches away from it looks like leaves when you're when you step back a little bit. So that'll really help you from being from getting discouraged too, and from doing too much. Added a little bit more of lighter values around the tree with those greens. But I want to save those greens back there. Remember, they're all a little bit bluer in the background. A little spritz of water to keep my paint moist there. And moving back into some of those dark colors. That area on the left behind the tree, I need to... I need to resolve that a little bit more, develop it a little bit more. Looking at the reference photo, there's some dark colors back there, but I want to distinguish them from what's in the front, so I'm keeping them a little bit on the blue side. I know I don't want all that sky back there. Using that green to reshape the tree trunk, deciding how thick I want that trunk, A little more blue and purple, a little bit of green to create some of that distant foliage. A little more ultramarine in there. I wanted a little more blue. Just a hint of what's going on back there. It's not going to be quite as light as those distant shapes we put in the center because you don't, this area, we want to keep it kind of quiet. It's right on the edge of the canvas and in the corner of the canvas. We don't want to draw the eye there. So, don't want a lot of sharp contrast and value and color. I just want to create a couple more tree trunks back there. So they're going to need, they're a little bit closer, so they're going to need a little bit of slightly darker colors like the ones on the right, to the right of the big tree trunk. But these are a little bluer, so nothing's exactly the same color as you move across the painting. You always want to gradate and create shifts. Some more yellow into that and a little bit of white to get some slightly lighter colors. Looking at these tree trunks again, too, and making sure I've got shapes that I like in them. The more, the more of these slightly different colors and values that we can put down uh, in the greens, the more interesting it's going to be. 
What we're really avoiding is doing all the same colors. Working on this back tree trunk a little bit. Well, actually it's the foreground tree trunk. Pretty happy with the shapes I've got going on. In, it's looking very leafy in the foreground. It's coming forward. So I think I want to develop this trunk a little bit more. Reestablishing those darks with the dark, my dark purplish color. Remembering that the light is kind of coming from the right side a little bit. So the left sides are going to be darker. There's some brownish colors. Developing those that light side a little bit more. A little bit lighter. Just touching my brush to the canvas to create some of those shapes that I see in the tree trunk. The kind of the way the bark grows kind of in vertical shapes. Looking at it a lot, stepping back and squinting and just looking at that tree trunk and deciding, comparing it to the reference, deciding what is working and what isn't. So moving on to the foliage that is in front of the tree trunk, adding a little bit of those coming from the right hand side. Just little show horizontal shapes. Using that brush now horizontally and, and laying down the tip of it to get a little bit of a leaf shape. A little more yellow as I move into the light a little bit more. But I like having those leaves in front of the tree trunk. That helps to settle it back a little bit and also gives me a sense of depth. There's just leaves everywhere in this scene. I love it. Nothing more pleasant than taking a walk down a forest path. Just feel like you're enveloped in green. The air itself it feels green. Okay, using those greens now that are a little bit brighter, a little bit yellower in the center area. They're not as bright as the greens in the foreground, right? But they're leaning that way. The center is where we want to bring the eye. We want that eye to, the eye of the viewer to follow the path into the painting. And so that center area there is going to have a little more interest than the edges. Doing lots of looking at this point. As, you, as I move on in the painting, as I get closer to the end, I'm going to spend a lot more time looking. So here's a, a bluish color using some ultramarine there, because I want to start laying in these flowers that are in the foreground. And you can see in the reference photo how the shapes are going to be more visible and darker in the foreground. So, whereas the ones in the back are just kind of a, a vague shape of a purplish blue color, I'm going to spend a little time to make these a little bit more refined, have a little bit more obvious shapes to them. I want to get those, the stock effect of those one, the ones back there too, using my slightly lighter blues. I don't want to do too much back there. But I want the ones in the foreground to have a little more interest. So they're going to have some darks, some mediums, some lights. Adding a little bit of red into that. As, as this gets lighter, again, as the color moves into the light, I'm going to add white and I'm going to add some red to make make the blue a little purplier and that will show that it's in the sunlight. So wherever I'm, the sunlight is hitting the flowers, that's where I'm putting this lighter color. Just a touch more of the red. Now I'm using just the very corner of my brush and I can make a little tiny shape.
Maybe a couple of them over here on the right side too. Using just sort of the mid-tone color, not so much of the really light colors over here. But I do want these, these few in the foreground to have lots of variety. Okay, mixing up a blue-green. So I want to add a couple of stems in there. Just a couple. I don't want to overdo it with this, but just two or three little stems. A little more blue to that and I can create some more leaf shapes. I don't want it that area on the right was just kind of all light green and I instead want to add a little bit more variety over there. And that brings the eye back into the leaves that are more in the center and not off of the edge of the canvas. A little more of that bluey, purpley color. Add a few more touches to those flowers. I don't want to overdo them. I want it to be impressionistic and loose. I don't want to draw things in real tightly. Okay, mixing up some dark. So I felt like these tree trunks over on the right weren't settling down in into the uh, into the foliage. They need some dark where they're going down into the foliage. You're going to be a little more in shadow. Got some orange and some ultramarine blue to work a little bit more on these foreground rocks. A little bit of a lighter value. I just want to create some variation and some shifts in, in the color there. Also there's a, a rock there and it's blending right into the pathway. I can't tell where the rock stops and the path starts. So adding some darker colors there. My mossy color on those rocks. This is right on the edge of the canvas, so I don't want to go, I don't want to have a lot of detail here. Not, not like the time I spent on the rock in the back. I just want it to be kind of neutral. And not grab my attention. So if there's something about the rocks that grabs my eye, I'm going to fix that by adjusting the value, the color, the shape. That's all we're doing really when we're painting, right? Here's a lighter, one of my our mossy greens. Add a little bit of a green to the light sides of those trunks. It's not as light as the one in the foreground, but just a touch of variation of maybe where the lights filtering through the leaves and hitting the trunks here and there. Getting close to the end of the, our little painting today and as I get closer to the end I spend more time just looking. Ran out of white there so I added a little bit of titanium white so I'd used it all up. Then want some nice clean white. Just looking at the image and seeing what catches my eye. Glancing back and forth from the reference to the rock. And I decided to put a little bit of some touches of even lighter purplish red on those flowers that are in the sunlight more. Adding some of that in the front so I get a lot of value shift in that foreground from very dark to very light. What catches your eye? That's what you're looking for. Anything that just catches your eye in a place that you don't want it to be. Tiny bit of thalo blue with a bunch of white because I now want to restate my light in the behind the trees. So I'm going to be using negative painting again, painting around my shapes back there to further define them. And I want to get I want to get some 
some light coming through, some sky coming through. I don't want it to be quite so heavy and dense. So I'm using that thalo blue, but you got to be careful with thalo blue because it's such a strong pigment. pigment. So I want it to, to read as blue, but I want it to be as light as I can go and still read as blue. Over here on this left hand side, I want to lighten up that big mass of greens back there. And by doing that, it creates some shapes of that are leaf-like. You want to be careful as you do this negative painting that you don't chop off, off one of your tree trunks. It's really easy to be dabbing in the paint and realize you've dabbed right over where the tree trunk would have gone. So be mindful of where those, those branches and those trunks are as you're doing this. But you, you see how I can use that color then to create some more trunk-like shapes in the back and leaf-like shapes. It takes practice, this negative painting, so don't be frustrated if, if, uh, if it doesn't come really easily. Take your time. Remember, I've sped up this video a little bit, so take your time and think about where you're putting each of your little dots. Look at your painting right at, at this point you're going to be wanting to look at your painting more than your reference photo because you want to see what's working and what isn't and work with what you've got which may not be exactly like the reference and that's okay but work with enhancing the shapes that are working Using the very corner of my brush, that gives me a little tiny shape of the blue. Getting very close to the end here. I'm glad you could join me today. You can find me at karenalari.com with all the links to the different things that I'm doing and classes and whatnot. And you can also join me on Facebook if you search for the group Paint with Karen and that's a great place I'd love to see you there and sharing the paintings that you make from this little tutorial. Taking a step back checking out what I've done squinting it's so important to squint or step back really important. I also often leave the painting for a day or two and come back to it to after I've had a chance to look at it for a while. I decided it needed a little bit more of depth in these upper branches or foliage so I added a little bit of a lighter yellow or green. I don't want it to compete with the foreground, I want it to stay in the background but I want it to have some interest and I can use those leaves to soften up the shapes of the trunks and have them not be not lead our eye out of the painting too much because we always want to lead the eye in the painting not out and blocking the the trunks will help do that so here's some fairly bright orangish color to, deciding to brighten up that sunlit area on the path a little bit more. Tiny bit of blue in that and so that it's not bright orange. But as that paint dries you'll see the colors start to darken down and that's when you know you want to come back in and add restate the lights and that is something that you do a lot in acrylics. I can use that same light to add a touch on to the tree trunk too where the sunlight's hitting and just a touch on that rock. It's not getting a lot of light but it, right there in our focal area it's getting a little bit of sunlight. Take your time, step back, these little touches little bit darker back there I decided I needed some 
some separation between the foliage on the far side of the path and what's in f on the left side of the path there. So I can do that by adding in a little bit of a bluer green. And that creates the shape I want there. A little more of my brighter green. Just a few touches coming over this rock. This where those that sun that I've created is going to be hitting the foliage there. Like I said, leaving your painting for a day or two and looking at it throughout the day will also help you a lot to just see little touches. Sometimes the smallest touch can, can really make a difference in something that draws your eye where it doesn't want to be. So thank you. Here's our little forest greens painting and I'm so glad you could join me today and I hope to see you on Facebook to share yours. Take care.